Well, hello everybody, it's Richard here. Welcome back to the channel. And today is Sunday the 7th of June 2020. And today I'm going to talk to you about several things um, like I normally do. But if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and also don't forget to press the little bell. So next time I'm broadcasting, you'll know when that's going to happen. In between time, just sit back and relax and enjoy the next few minutes and the tune of the day to keep COVID away um, at the very end of this chat. And I look forward to all your comments and uh, your views as well. And uh, we're doing very well. We've got over a thousand subscribers, uh, in fact, 1,019 altogether. So something must be going right. Um, and this must be, I haven't done a recce yet, but it must be uh, well into the 50s, one of the 50s uh, videos I've been doing. And um, what I've decided to do, because um, the government aren't uh, having a briefing at the weekends anymore, and we're starting to release the lockdown here in the UK, because the, uh, no, the R number, that's the average number of people who are infected by the one person, is on the way down, hopefully, though regionally some of that actually is on the way up and northwest is actually um, higher at the moment but overall the average number um, is uh, is going down I've decided to do a broadcast once a week now as opposed to every other day and I hope you're okay about that if you have a problem with that I'm certainly prepared to do every twice a week or something but I think once a week on a big update will be probably better if that's okay I'd like to thank everybody for staying with me all this length of time and uh, because um, you know it's been great I've thoroughly enjoyed that but I think um, with work and other things taking off and also commitments um, other commitments I think it's becoming quite difficult for me to get everything in place <laughs> though I love doing these videos and today's no exception to that okay so um, just to give you the briefing today so uh, from the newspapers because there hasn't been a government briefing a week briefing at weekends uh, there is to deaths to date are 40,452 that's 40,452 is the total number of deaths in the United Kingdom for all services and that's um, uh, today at least in the last 24 hours uh, 77 more people have passed away Yesterday, the total deaths stood at 40,465, and uh, there was 204 people who died yesterday. That was Saturday. And the number of positive tests yesterday was 1,557, um, and there were 7,000 plus people in hospital. I don't think that probably would have changed. Probably tomorrow we'll know no more uh, from, because the weekend there's always a bit of a lag there. Um, so yeah, John Edmonds, Professor John Edmonds was on the Andrew Marr show today, some people may have seen that, and he actually said that he admitted that the government should have imposed the lockdown two weeks earlier than it did, started in March, and that would have saved a few more lives. Um, uh, Matt Hancock slightly disagreed with that. Um, his view is that on SAGE, in which um, John Edmonds is a, is a member of SAGE, there are a hundred advisers I can't imagine any committee being of a hundred would be worth its salt because it's just too big. Um, you don't want more than 10 people. I can't imagine all those 100 joining every meeting they have. Um, so I think there's some unusual fudging going on there. And also the other interesting factor was that they said that by the 6th of June, they will all the tests for uh, coronavirus uh, in care homes and care home staff would be completed. They've now changed that to the number of tests sent out by the 6th of June. There is still a shortage. The National Care Forum is reporting that um, though the tests have been sent out, there are some false positives and false retesting that has to be done. And it's only in the in the 40% range of tests that have been completed, which is slightly different from what the government tell you. But then I always say to you, don't I, do take these figures with a pinch of salt. OK, well, the weather today, yes, it's 14 degrees. I'm in a T-shirt. It was quite cool yesterday um, when I went for my run. 
though very pleasant. Um, in fact, no, I didn't go for a run yesterday, Friday when I went for a run, very pleasant. Um, so it has warmed up and I took the jumper and uh, shirt, warm shirt off today. I've been working outside, I've been using some, uh, actually I should have brought it with me, some polish that I got, some nice polish for Grecio and I've uh, been doing all that, uh, giving her wash and a polish today and also touching in with the, uh, the, with the little chipstick I've got. Um, on the grey chipstick I've got in the little places. It's quite amazing when the light hits a car from a different perspective, because I backed him onto the driveway this, this morning as opposed to being forward, that uh, you see things slightly different. So I found a few more little chips that needed dealing with. And um, so that's been interesting. A bit of a challenge today as well. Um, I've decided to change the bulb in the reversing and fog light, and they sit within the bumper of the car. And this is the bulb here, it's a small, small one. I was going to change it to a Cree bulb because they give a brighter light when you're reversing and also when um, you're on the motorway and it's very foggy. I've got the fitting off the reversing lamp, but can I get the devil back on again? It's quite difficult. It's up inside the, the uh, bumper and though I can feel it, I can't get it to fit properly. When I consulted the manual, it says consult the dealer for more advice. It gives you instructions about every other bulb you can change in that car but not the reversing and fog and I find that a bit frustrating because I'm a guy who likes to get on with these engineering tasks and it should be quite easy. So I'm going to, I put a call out to Love 500, uh, you remember the YouTube channel that I, would, I, I recommended to you and I'm hoping that he'll be coming back with some information about that. It looks like it fits into a little twist fitting and um, so underneath on the uh, driver's side, the right hand side, the uh, fog light, it feel it's in the sort of downward position so I'm trying to re replicate that on the other side and having great difficulty. If it comes to it I'll take it to a local garage and have them fit it. It's a five minute job I expect but I'll make sure I get the right bulbs first. So a little bit of a challenge today. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, where are we? The video, um, yes, uh, the video of the day from YouTube is uh, My Classic Car, which is a re it's an American uh, production, and Dennis Gage hosts that. Really good, some really lovely cars, some real classics he has on there. And if you like classic cars, then you'll enjoy Dennis's updates. He's really quite a character, actually. Um, so do do pop over and I'll put a link in the description. The other thing, the um, tune of the day today, it's uh, Liam Neeson's um, birthday today. He's 68 and some people may remember Liam Neeson for the BAFTA winning Schindler's List. Um, so this is the CD from Schindler's List. This is a remastered CD. Uh, seven Academy Awards, including Best Original Score and John Williams' Rose's Score. Ben Kingsley played in there, who's no longer with us anymore, and uh, it's a fantastic film. I then went out, because um, it's been going, I think it's, it's now completed 25 years, so this is the digital remaster in Blu-ray, which I bought a little while ago. Um, it's a film which, uh, when I hear the music, it gives me a tingle every single time down my spine. Ikmal Palman plays the violin piece in this. And having been to Auschwitz myself and to Krakow and to Birkenau 1 and 2, uh, you do resonate very clearly with this film, Man's Inhumanity to Man. In fact, the, where this was film was filmed, it was actually filmed in, um, in Poland, but in a another uh, area of Poland I'm not remind I can't remember where but there is um, a video channel I did tune into once where they play they went to the actual site um, and some of the film stuff is still there um, but it's very much similar to the, to the actual camp itself not Auschwitz it wasn't it wasn't about Auschwitz it was about a similar type camp in Poland because there were several satellite camps and Auschwitz is the main one that you think about though that was split into two as well so that's the um, tune of the day, the theme tune from Schindler's List, very haunting, and uh, and um, so I heard it uh, announced on Classic FM when I was cleaning the car today, and Bill Turnbull does his Saturday show, and uh, so I turned it up so I could hear it and just stand and listen uh, before, so I thought I'd share this with you, um, this very haunt haunting melody and an extremely good film. It's not one you want to watch very often, but it's certainly worth a view. 
And that goes along with the other one, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, which is also a film that I've seen and um, find quite haunting in certain places. Anyway, I just thought I'd mention that to you. So those are the things from me today. The next time I'll be uploading a video and broadcasting will be next Saturday. Uh, next Saturday I think I'll do one and that will be on the weekly basis. So I hope that's okay. Look forward to seeing you all very soon. You take care. Don't forget to comment. Don't forget to like and share if you think the video is worth it. And I'll see you all very soon. Bye for now. On the birthday of Liam Neeson's 68th birthday, Schindler's List in memory of the Holocaust.